So with your body posture, you want to be aware of not just of how you're standing and what you're doing with your body, but also your orientation, the direction of your movement, the way that you are distributing your weight as you move. All of these things are really important. I'll give you some examples in just a moment. When you're interacting, especially with shy cats, let them come to you if you are able to do so. Any leaning or reaching over an animal can be super intimidating for them. And you also want to ask for consent, which means you offer or invite an interaction. And if they want it, they will initiate it. If they don't, if they move away, they ignore you or they say no in some other way, always be respectful of that. That's really important. So what I wanna do as far as the body language exercise is I want to show you how to move in and out of your space with what we call low social pressure. And I'm gonna show you how that body language can influence how your pets feel. When I enter a space, I wanna be really aware of how I'm doing that and how my orientation to my cat, who is gonna be the owl in the corner there because I couldn't guarantee where these guys would be. Um, my orientation to my shy cat over in the corner there is gonna make a big difference. So when I enter, I'm gonna put myself in the middle of the space where my cat can see me. I, I wouldn't obviously be this close to a real shy cat, most likely. I'd be as far away from them as I could be across the room. But for this example, we're gonna start right here in the middle of the space. Do you think she hears treats? And when I'm sitting here, I wanna be aware of my posture. Now I can sit like this on my knees or in a crouch position, but if I do that, I'm actually in a more stressful position for my cat because from here, I can spring up very quickly and easily. And that's more of a predatory kind of pounce type posture, which for a shy cat can be really stressful. So instead of um, pointing your body in their direction and being in this type of posture, what I want you to do is orient away from them, where if they're sitting there, your body is sidelong or not pointed at them directly, which decreases the pressure. So me looking directly at you, we're clearly interacting, we're less clearly interacting. So if I'm facing you and you're my shy cat, we're less clearly interacting from here, or at least less directly than here. So if that's my shy cat, I wanna be alongside them as opposed to facing them directly. And I'm gonna put myself into an I can't get up and run quickly from this posture position. Now, what that would actually look like for you will depend on your space, your you know, mobility, different things like that. So whatever's comfortable for you will work, but think about this type of position. From here, <laughs> I can't get up and run after you quickly. And by tilting my body this way, I'm actually further away. I've moved about a foot away from my cat. So my, I'm pointing away from my cat. My body's oriented away from them. If they want, they can come over and sniff my foot or interact that way. But again, I'm adding distance between myself and my cat. And from this position, I can talk to my cat. I can read to my cat. I can make up songs and sing to my cat. Whatever we know we all do as cat owners, you can do all of those things. So my shy cat is over here. I can interact with them in a low pressure way. I can be talking to them or I can see them out of the corner of my eye, but I'm not directly looking at them and trying to interact, which can be really overwhelming. So again, I'm in this position. Now, here's where I wanna be during my interaction, but what about getting up? If I'm getting up, I wanna be really aware of that. Watch this. I'm currently here. I am now a foot away from this cat. I have moved between two and three feet closer just by the nature of getting up. And if I'm here, even if I just turn to get up, look at how much closer I am. That makes a difference. So when you're here and you want to get up, remember we're big and scary compared to a cat, as far as our height and our general weight and bulk. If I turn away, I orient my body further away from my cat, I can get up and move out of their space. So be really aware of how you enter a space, how you move through that space, how you interact with your cats. For some shy cats, you may be able to go in and interact with them more. But if you did have a shyer cat who wasn't really into that type of interaction, you might start at a diagonal as far away across the room from them as you can while still being aware of all of these pieces. So when you're interacting with cats, whether it's a cat that you know or a cat that you don't know, where it's always good to assume that they might be less comfortable, um, be aware of how you're moving in a space, how you're, you know, as your weight shifts, as you move around, how that changes, how close you are to a cat. And Jimmy is obviously very comfortable. She's laying down here. If I lean over her, 
She's less, thank you. She's less interested in that. And she's always harassing me for attention. And if I lean over her, even there, she looks up and she, you couldn't see it, but she was like, her eyes got wider, her mouth opened up a little bit like, hey, what's going on? So be really aware of that. Even with cats that you know, you always wanna be respectful of how you're interacting within their space. And as far as asking for consent goes, she's now licking my hand. She wants me to interact with her. Whereas with Poe, thank you, you guys are perfect. If I had done this to her with her brother here, now she's ignoring my hand because her brother is here and we're vying for attention. And that's, <laughs> and that's an example of how context can make a very big difference in your cat's behavior. Thank you, you too.